So as you move from founder to funder, how does it change inside for you? Well, so from 1994 to 96, I made about 40 angel investments. So I was writing checks, $25,000, $50,000 checks very aggressively into startups in the beginning of the commercial internet. I had a number of companies that were very successful. One of the ones that many people know is a company called Harmonix that yep. created Guitar Hero and Rock Band. That was an early investment of mine. And at this period of time, I was very much still working for Ameridata in this role that I had. I was making these angel investments. And in some cases, I kind of looked like a co-founder. So I was making these investments they're so very, early. very early. Yeah. And I was working with the entrepreneurs very early. So I ended up having a role that was a chairman role. And it was really kind of a crossover role between the entrepreneur and the founder. I left Ameridata after about 18 months. And that company ended up, they ended up getting bought by GE. Mm -hmm. And that was a very good exit for everybody involved. And continued to do these uh, angel investments. And along the way, I co-founded another company called Interliant with Len, the guy that bought my first company, and two other guys, a guy Raj, who he and I have now done eight companies together, and another guy, Steve. And that company was incredibly successful and then failed. So we, we raised $42 million in 1996, two, of our, two million from us, 40 million from uh, uh, a private equity firm. We bought 20 companies, web hosting companies. Okay. We took it public in 1999. Before or after? Uh, before the bubble. Before the bubble. Uh, we uh, p had a peak market cap of $2.5 billion. You got out, cashed out completely. You were fine when it failed. Nope. Even better. Okay. Um, we, uh, we raised a million, $160 million of debt after the company had gone public, and that's what caused the company, not caused it to fail, but caused it to the equity become worthless because we mastered the art. We were about a $50 million a quarter company. So at our peak, maybe we did $12, $13 million a month. We had mastered the art of losing $5 million a month. Remember that first company that made money every month? We, we were so good at losing $5 million a month, month after month after month. And in the public markets at the time, you're getting rewarded for growth. Don't worry about how much money you're as losing. As long as you're growing. Just keep growing, and that's all good. And our stock price would go up. And then one day, that wasn't true anymore. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you had to be profitable. But we had, we had no way to get there quickly. And so the, the equity value of the company declined. Ultimately, the company went bankrupt. And the company went bank bankrupt because the value of the company was below the $160 million of debt. Our stock as founders was linked to the stock of the private equity firm. So we weren't able to sell our stock unless they sold their stock. And then when they sold their stock, we could only sell proportionally to their stock. They had $40 million investment. At the peak, they had a billion dollar gain. They didn't sell a single share of stock. Which meant you couldn't sell a single right. share of stock. So I had this experience as an entrepreneur now of this company that went from nothing to this extraordinary value to nothing, which was pretty powerful. During this period of time, I'd started a venture capital firm with some other people, and I did a bunch of investments, and I had a bunch of successful companies. So it wasn't that this was the only thing I was doing, but it was very public. I was co-chairman. It was with my mentor, Len. It was very visible and very painful. And I put an enormous amount of emotional energy into it, not as the investor, but as the entrepreneur, while I was spending a bunch of my other time as an investor across lots of other companies. And in 2001, in the sort of aftermath of the bubble and things sort of falling apart, I really had to come to the place where I had to either be an entrepreneur or an investor. It was too hard. There was too much emotional dissonance for me to do both. And it was just too exhausting. And so it was at that point where I decided to put my energy into being an investor instead of an entrepreneur. Now, you're not like other investors.